Thank you, Ricky. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Are you still excited? Yes. What's your energy level? One to ten. Ten to be the best, and one to be. Mm, I'm draining, Sam. <laughs> All right. So uh, before we get started, uh, very quick survey. How many of you are actually using Gutenberg for your day-to-day -day post uh, publishing? And how many of you have disabled Gutenberg and using classic editor? <laughs> how many of you actually hate Gutenberg? OK. One final question. How many of you actually have no idea what I'm talking about? Thank you. All right, so uh, let me just show you a survey that I've conducted on my social media. I ask people, what is the editor you're using in your WordPress? And this is a response I got, like a majority using classic editor, uh, and some of them using Gutenberg, and very few uh, people using uh, other editors. And this question is for day-to-day um, -day publishing. So I'm not talking about page designs. As, if, as a web developer, you're probably designing a page which is, uh, for example, about us or uh, our products. Uh, you might be using a, a, a page builder, a fantastic page builder, a commercial, commercial page builder. Uh, these are the pages we usually use, page builders. That's absolutely fine. I'm talking about day-to-day -day publishing. Let's say in your company today, you are writing an article about WordCamp Singapore. How many of you are planning to write an article about WordCamp Singapore, your participation in WordCamp Singapore? That's great. The rest of you, you should do it. That's what that other guy talking in the other room. OK? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so when I saw the schedule, I thought probably I'll be speaking to the chairs, and uh, everyone will be in the other rooms. Google is talking in the other room. But I'm glad you guys are here today for Gutenberg, because uh, Gutenberg is going to be it's already in the core, and there's a lot of development happening. I'm going to share some of that today with you. Uh, so this is a traditional editor. What you see is what you get. Uh, but uh, it's not exactly what you see is what you get, right? <laughs> we have been using this for many, many years. And uh, I, I know the suffering, and you know the sufferings. Uh, we suffered together. Uh, but this has been a wonderful editor. The Tiny MC has been there for many years, and it helped us a lot to get through from HTML and plain coding to something that you can done to some extent. Uh, look at this. Uh, this is a classic editor, and I put some two pictures there. It's a durian season in Malaysia. Uh, how many of you are durian lovers? How many of you hate durians? See, these are the Gutenberg and classic editor guys. So. <laughs> So I'm trying to align the images. There is no columns. Uh, I'm a bit struggling with that images. Finally, I got something, and I'm going to view it, and I got this. <laughs> so it's not exactly what you see is what you get. But uh, classic editor, to some extent, it helped us a lot. And that's where uh, a revolution happened in WordPress. Uh, Gutenberg were introduced back in 2017 in WordCamp Europe by Matt Mullenberg. So Gutenberg is uh, new revolution in content authoring in WordPress. Uh, all of you have Gutenberg. So those of some of you raised up now, just now, say no idea what I'm talking about. You actually already own a Gutenberg. So be proud of it. So now I'm going to show you how to use Gutenberg and what kind of things we can get done with Gutenberg. And what are some of the limitations of Gutenberg here? Um, let's look at this. Uh, few uh, new features in Gutenberg, uh, how, what you can get done. Uh, first of all, post covers. You can have uh, image or video post cover. So this is my Gutenberg editor. I'm going to add uh, a title, um, and then I'm going to put a new block. This is blocks. We call it block. And I'm searching for cover, and that's a cover. And I'm going to pick one of the images, all lovely durian images there. And that's a cover, and uh, Mosan King is the best of its class. It's like WordPress in, compared to all other CMS. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's now full width, and uh, that's a beautiful cover there. And uh, I'm going to add some text. And down there, I'm going to do one more cover with a video background. So uh, it's, it's just a few minutes to get these beautiful covers for your pages. Now I'm going to add, add a short video there. And uh, this video I took from Singapore. YouTube channel. So it's Singapore durian. Malaysian durian looks slightly different. It's much better, actually. Uh, 
so it's wider and uh, if you preview it now uh, I got a beautiful cow here right and I done this using Gutenberg editor I'm uh, um, yeah uh, so uh, can you do this with classic editor yeah, so uh, uh, let, let's, let's look at some columns. You can create columns easily with Gutenberg now. Uh, columns are things that you want to align uh, multiple objects in the same line. Uh, we have suffered with tables, right? Usually we use table to put different things in the same line, and it sucks on the mobile devices because tables are not responsive. So you need to work around with your HTML to make it responsive. Um, so. If you're not good in HTML, I don't want to ask you how many of you can do HTML, I can see that now. Uh, if you're not good in HTML, then that's a big struggle <laughs> for, uh, to do something. So I'm just designing three boxes there, and I'm going to put up some contents. I'm sorry, this video is slightly longer. Uh, so <laughs> that's the three different durian and the price. Uh, I know some of you are wondering, is that the price in Malaysia? Yes, it is. Um, I do some alignment at the same time, you can see on the right, there is property settings. So you can make some customization in Gutenberg. So now I got three boxes with three different tags and three price tags there, and I align everything to the center so I can imagine what will happen on the mobile device. I apply some background colors, colors, and there, click there, yeah. So background colors uh, looks much better. And uh, let's look at this in our front end now. This is what I got, so three columns. And let me switch to mobile device, what we see in our mobile device. Look at it. So it's well stacked and it's a very responsive view. Yeah, it's stacked on your mobile. I'm just ch changing to latest iPhone X. Is that the latest device? So <laughs> now this is an iPhone X. So it's, it's much compatible. Uh, it, it is responsive in a way that you can control how it is aligned. Uh, so columns is one of beautiful feature in Gutenberg. A lot of people cried when <laughs> Gutenberg was launched because there were no columns, and uh, later the columns were introduced, and uh, now it's, it's much um, stable. Social and Maths, one example. Uh, if you're writing a post uh, like this, uh, you want to embed some Twitter or Facebook, right? Uh, and you can just put, that's me with my Matt Mullen work. Uh, I, I know, I just simply picked this tweet to brag about it. So uh, and that's a Facebook post. I just copied that URL and put it up. Click embed. So now I got Facebook, Twitter, and Facebook uh, post embedded within my article. And it's beautiful. Just a few clicks. You don't need to use third party plugins to do this. Probably you have seen such embeds in news websites, right? Uh, or, or any other uh, online uh, portals. If you are still missing classic editor, and it, all the points that I've mentioned just now, few feature highlight doesn't convince you, and you're really, really missing classic editor, now we have classic editor block within Gutenberg. So you can add classic, and here you go. Do whatever you want. <laughs> so it's, it's, a, it's a classic editor within Gutenberg, and that's what you get. So, there's no reason why we have to switch to Classic Editor and Disable Gutenberg, uh, other than some of the points I'm going to mention next. Um, let's see, what are the features that is uh, packaged together in Gutenberg? Reusable blocks. Let's say you have designed something beautifully, uh, something like this that we did just now. Uh, you can save this. So just click there and click Add to Reusable Blocks and give it a name. For example, uh, I'm giving a name as my three columns. Save. That was saved. Now I'm creating a new post, a brand new post, clicking new post and go, and this is a new post. I'm going to call the reusable block that I saved. Here it is. So you can always uh, create some templates that you usually use and save it and recall it on other pages. So that's reusable blocks. Uh, if you have designed something great, you can share with your friends or with other websites. So what you can do is you can export this block that you saved just now, and they can import in their website. Uh, so this is how we do it. So we go all the way to the three dot at the end of the page, and there's a menu with several settings, manage all blocks, and this is the block that I saved. Export as uh, JavaScript object <coughs> notation, and then in the new website, you can click import in the same, same area. 
So with this, you save a lot of time uh, by sharing the blog. So it's not just designing and keep it on your website. You can switch it to a different website for the particular blogs. A blog manager is a new feature introduced like just months ago. Uh, it allows you to control uh, which blocks are enabled in your WordPress and which blocks are not. Because sometimes this block can be overwhelming because there's so many blocks and your content author get confused which block to click because there's so many blocks. So you can simply disable some of the blocks and uh, enable the blocks that is only required for your website. For example, um, uh, if you go to that setting and block manager and you can see there's so many blocks. So you can disable all unnecessary blocks that you think you want you be using or you don't want other author to use on your website. And uh, just uncheck and close it. So now if I go and add a new block on my page and under embeds, so I only see a few. Otherwise you will have a long list of so many embeds. So this is a new feature uh, which uh, allow you to manage uh, what exactly uh, you want to allow other people to um, use on your Gutenberg. Custom CSS, this is something uh, cool if you are like front-end developer or you know something to, some code to write, how, how to write CSS. Uh, CSS cascading style sheets that allow you to style any area of your page, any element in your page. So now with the blocks, everything is a block. You can simply style all these blocks. Uh, for example, I'm gonna add one CSS for this text block. So I click on the text block at once and additional CSS class, I'm gonna add my CSS, that's the class, for example. I'm gonna front end, that's a Durian website, and then click on the customize. And now in the additional CSS, I'm gonna call my CSS here. So it's uh, uh, dot my CSS. It's a class, so I start with dot, and, and I'm gonna just do some CSS, and I can see what's happening to that content, because that content has this class, right? I just had it. So I'm just writing some uh, design. Uh, uh, co uh, don't call this as a code. It's not exactly a code. So it's a property value. These things are totally fixed. So if you don't know CSS, uh, go back and please learn about CSS. Because uh, in future, WordPress, everything will be the customizer. So there's no theme settings, there's no theme option in the back end, there's no widgets in the back end. So everything will be in the customizer. So you will be relying a lot on the uh, CSS. So this will be very helpful. I just write four lines of uh, pro property and values here and I got something like that. So that is the additional CSS in Gutenberg. Uh, these are the flexibilities and options you have in Gutenberg. Uh, uh, and um, some extra tips uh, using Gutenberg is you, you can use a slash to insert blocks, so you no need to go and press plus uh, to insert a block. Just put slash and just call whatever name you want. For example, Twitter, it comes up Twitter. Support markups, you can use double hashtag and write something that will become heading. And then you can use uh, forward, what's that, what do we call that? You get a quote there and then uh, quote uh, to get quote blocks and then bullets, you can use star. Uh, and then you can use shift enter so you don't get a new block but you're maintaining the same block. Sometimes when you enter you get a next text block, right? So you can do shift enter. Shift alternate H, you can find out a lot of keyboard shortcuts, how keyboard shortcuts help in Gutenberg. Similar to we have some shortcuts in classic editor, right? And we use a lot of shortcut in different software, like control C, control V, these are the basic shortcuts that you use. But a part of that, you have many other keyboard shortcuts that you can use in Gutenberg. Uh, you can refer that. Um, why you should use Gutenberg uh, over classic editor? Uh, Gutenberg is a part of the core. Uh, that means um, WordPress will support Gutenberg. Eventually, all themes and plugins need to support uh, Gutenberg. So uh, you have um, an advantage here over any other page builder. If I'm using a page builder, uh, for example, um, WP Bakery. Anyone from WP Bakery here? <laughs> Never ever used that. So, uh, can we censor this later in the video? Uh, <laughs> 
So WP Bakery is uh, like a bloated with so many codes. Um, you know, uh, I know some of you thinking that's the same case with page builders, right? So Gutenberg going to be the same case? No. Um, in the next phase, they're going to introduce async. So with the async, async, if you are using some blocks on the page, it will load that particular JavaScript. If not, it won't load. So it's not like one package of JavaScript loaded on all pages. Uh, so these are the some plans uh, coming up for Gutenberg. Uh, less plugins to manage. Everything will be block uh, oriented in future. Like uh, down the road, next three years, uh, you will see less and less plugins in the plugin store, and more and more blocks. So you just install blocks, and you don't need to manage so many plugins. Uh, blocks are not easy to develop. I know there's a learning curve because it's based on React Native, and you need to learn React Native to develop new blocks. If you're a programmer, um, how many of you are already using React Native? I had some very useful conversation around what comes Singapore today. I found some of you already creating your own blocks. Gutenberg has been developed very actively in the past three years. We got more than 10,000 commit and more than 1,000 releases. And we got two star for the plugins. Yay! <laughs> Uh, it's simply, uh, it's not a bad thing. Why people uh, are using Classic Editor over Gutenberg is most probably they're using outdated theme. So the theme doesn't support Gutenberg Editor, so they have to use Classic Editor. So if you are new to WordPress and uh, you want to use uh, create pages and contents, I strongly recommend use Gutenberg over Classic Editor. Classic Editor will be retiring in 2021, so there's two more years wow. to support it. After 2021, you have to use Gutenberg, OK? <laughs> so it's I'm begging you now to use, but later on, I don't. You have to use it. <laughs> so uh, just kidding. <laughs> so um, Gutenberg is a very actively developed. This is a roadmap for Gutenberg. You can see um, <coughs> a sync function is here, the stars. Uh, the menu block, uh, there's one project running separately, uh, working on the menu block for Gutenberg. So soon we will have menu block. You can add menu anywhere on your page. So it will be like uh, any other commercial page builder you have out there. But remember, I don't tell that Gutenberg is as good as commercial page builder like Elementor or any other page builder, because the purpose of Gutenberg is for content authoring, not to design your pages. If you want to have beautiful design and you want to add all sort of commercial elements, a bloated page that load in 30 seconds, go ahead, use any commercial <laughs> page builders. Uh, because um, the objective here is to make content authors easier for them to design uh, 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 content pages uh, without much efforts, or without working with um, uh, codes. Uh, you remember how we add tables in Classic Editor? How do we do that? Uh, painfully. Painfully. Bracket table. Bracket table, bracket, and TR, TH, and, and all sort of things. Some of them have no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> it's OK. So that's how we do tables. In, in Gutenberg, we already have table block built in. Uh, it's just not very responsive. It's uh, just tables. You can style the tables. Uh, we have buttons. Uh, we have a lot of other things in, in um, this uh, Gutenberg coming up. Um, I have designed a website, uh, gutenberg.me.my, uh, and I put some demo pages there. So if you go to this website, click this demo, you can see all the pages that I've demonstrated just now uh, from this website. There's something called Frontenberg. <laughs> if you click Frontenberg, you can use Gutenberg right away without a WordPress. So if you think that you don't want to have Gutenberg now. You just want to play around. That's a playground. Just click on Frontenberg and play around and see how it works. So it just probably take 10 to 15 minutes to learn how Gutenberg works for you. With that, uh, thank you so much. Uh, if you have any questions. Any questions? Hands up. I, I have a question about um, templates. So I work with Elementor. So if I design an Elementor uh, raw template, can my client use Gutenberg within the template? Uh, you mean saving the whole page as a template? 
So basically, I will make a template and I will put in for every blog page, right? Yeah. So, um, saying that my, my client would like to make some uh, blog post with, with, um, with tables. So can they use a Gutenberg within my uh, template? Uh, within Elementor, you mean? Yes. Yeah, so no. <laughs> No, so you can only use whether uh, because the the how the output of HTML is totally different. Uh, WordPress try to keep the output of HTML close to the HTML, and other company have their own standard, uh, own naming convention. Um, some companies um, um, good uh, block editor will only work within certain environment. So therefore, you can't cross use it, uh, but. Uh, like reusable block is something like that. So you can save reusable block or some uh, one other thing that we have in uh, Gutenberg is uh, if you look at uh, this at the end, if you click the menu at the end, there is something called copy everything. So you can copy everything on your page and paste in uh, some other page. But uh, at this moment, you can't cross use Gutenberg with other page builders. Okay. You can put an elemental block that says post content. Into Gutenberg. Yeah. But you can't put, if that makes sense. Okay, so I, I, when I make my own design, write my own block design. Yeah, so every block that will be generated um, will have that design. So I use the classic editor for that. So it's not possible to, instead of use the classic editor, use the Gutenberg Sam, I upgraded my site to WordPress 5.0 and now all of my previous content looks weird, you know, when I go to edit this inside this box. So what happened to my content? Good question. So what happened is that in the 5.0, the classic editor were removed and it comes with Gutenberg by default. So Gutenberg will try to convert your content to the blocks. So most probably you will get a lot of bunch of text blocks or one text block with everything in it. So it depends uh, how your content were created earlier. Uh, that definitely requires some works if you want to convert into different blocks. But um, if you have so much of changes, uh, I would suggest you can always use, you can always switch between Gutenberg and Classic Editor. So those old pages, you can switch Classic Editor. Just activate the plugin to edit that pages. But when you're composing new page, use Gutenberg. I know you knew the answer, and it's, it's the FAQ he's trying to highlight here. <laughs> So you can always switch between Gutenberg and Classic Editor. If you're editing the old pages that you already done, just switch to Classic Editor and do it. So you don't need to uh, go through a painful process to convert into Gutenberg blocks. But all new pages moving forward, you can create in uh, Gutenberg Editor. You can have both in your website, actually. Same is there any way to make uh, Gutenberg blocks that doesn't require React? Is there any tools out there you can make blocks with, your own blocks, without, without having to use React? Uh, as far as I know, no. <laughs> but I don't know if anyone has a better answer. Yes. Question or that's a, yes. Question or, uh, I thought, sorry. Yeah. Just a little bit. What do you think that why Gutenberg plugins are so many better? OK, I'll come to that. So just before that. Let me process in the, my left brain. So, <laughs> so uh, to answer that, uh, it's on the React for some reasons because we uh, right uh, now they're implementing autosave function as well. And so, custom fields. Custom fields, yeah. There is custom fields as well uh, in Gutenberg. You can go to the most setting and you can enable custom fields. Or um, did you make blocks with ICM? So I thought you'd know that. Yeah. There's a plugin called Moblet, which allows you to make blocks as Yeah, I will, I will strongly like don't recommend to use third-party plugins to create another block. So you can always 
go through React uh, because uh, if you remember Matt Mullenweg's uh, call a few years back, learn JavaScript deeply. Yeah. JavaScript is the future. So <laughs> use React to create blocks if you're really into creating blocks. Okay, to come for your questions about bad reviews, um, uh, it's, it's very hard. Uh, when I was in WordCamp Europe this year, some people just stomp to Matt Mullenweg and ask all these sort of questions. Why you introduce this? And why is that? <laughs> it's, uh, the way I see things is that uh, this is a great change. Uh, if WordPress have no Gutenberg, most probably down the road in two years or three years, people will be starting to move into other platforms such as Wix or other platform, Medium. You know, Gutenberg is pretty much similar to Medium editor, right? So pretty much all content authoring use block editors except WordPress, Joomla, Drupal, using traditional what you see is what you get editor. So this is a revolution. And when, uh, when WordPress introduced this, uh, a lot of bad comments because all developers, it put a big burden on developers. They need to make sure their teams and plugins now compatible with uh, Gutenberg. So that's where the whole thing comes up. But uh, you, I can see there's a lot of improvement now uh, compared to 2017, 2018, now 2019, Google Market is much more stable. Uh, so you can imagine what will happen next three years. So one way they overcome these bad reviews is by giving talk in what camps. <laughs> <laughs> okay, any other questions? Uh, sorry, I thought, yeah. sorry, any way to tell which plugins are suitable with Google? I mean, because some of the oh, yes, not sure correct. Uh, the best way to find this out is read the description of the plugins. <laughs> uh, only the plugin developer can tell you whether it's uh, work with Gutenberg or not. Uh, there's no way for us to find out other than the Gutenberg uh, developer. Okay, I've got time for one more question. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, <laughs> I asked one question. Yeah. I actually heard Sam that the lead developer at Tiny MCE has decided to join the Gutenberg project. Can you verify that's true? <laughs> I just heard a podcast on the way here and I'm like, no way. All those classic editor guys are going to be grumpy, but I think it's great. But do you know if that's true? Um, I don't have any information on that. I heard the rumors about it. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, there's a lot of people working on Gutenberg right now. We have 453 developers working on it. So uh, the contribution comes from different ends, including the classic editor, TinyMC, and all other editors. Just before I end, I just want to flash two more slides. WordCamp Kuala Lumpur coming up on this November. Feel free to join WordCamp Kuala Lumpur. Uh, it's happening in Bajaya Times Square, Kuala Lumpur. And uh, we have WordCamp Asia coming up in the February. So first ever regional WordCamp. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sam. Thank you,